Retail sales are at a record number, especially when you talk about increase. When you look at percentage increase, nobody's ever seen anything like it. So we're headed back in a very strong fashion with a V. And I think we're going to be very good with the coronavirus. I think that at some point uh, that's going to sort of just disappear, I hope. You still believe so? Disappear? Well, I do. I do. Yeah, sure. At some point. And I think we're going to have a vaccine very soon, too. That was President Donald Trump repeating uh, baseless statements on the coronavirus, as well as, of course, hyping up the economic news. Uh, So now, of course, he's been talking about this good economic news. Oh, there are more people, uh, more jobs being created. Actually, in reality, that those are just people being forced to go back to their jobs as a lot of these states are have been reopening. Uh, and so the economy is actually doing really bad. Yes, unemployment uh, rate is down to 11 percent. Uh, but in reality, it's still somewhere around 20. These are not new jobs being created. So nonetheless, he's, he's going to lie about that uh, and also say the coronavirus. Oh, uh, no, we're handling it very, very well. Uh, I give myself an A uh, when it comes to coronavirus. Jesus Christ. Uh, All right. You know, saying that it's going to disappear on its own, and this is, I think, my biggest problem here uh, with the administration, is that he's basically doing this to make the case that we as a country shouldn't be doing anything extra to fight the coronavirus. I mean, that's that's essentially it. He's saying, oh, no, it'll disappear on its own, so why are we going to do anything? I mean, close down the country again. Why? No, uh, you know, he, he to be fair, he is talking about ex, uh, extra uh, stimulus. He's talking about, I'm going to give the American, we're going to give more uh, stimulus. So I'm going to talk about it in about two weeks. Notice how he has this thing where he's like, oh, yeah, in a couple of weeks, you know, we're going to we're going to do something and we're going to help the American people. In that same interview, he talks about uh, the minimum wage. He was asked about the minimum wage, uh, which I think was a great question. Like, hey, what do you what do you plan on doing them with the minimum wage? Some people are saying, well, mainly conservatives, of course, are saying, now is not the time to raise wages. Oh no, no, we can't do that. And he says, well, a, a, a couple of weeks, uh, then we're gonna make a very strong statement on uh, the minimum wage. Uh, I disagree with people in my party. No, you know, he was a guy that remember back when he was campaigning was talking about we should eliminate the minimum wage. That is not. Uh, different than the rest of the Republican Party. The Republican Party on a whole, as a whole, says let's not raise a minimum wage. In fact, let's get rid of a federal minimum wage and allow the states to basically do whatever they want when it comes to wages. And if that means paying people $2 an hour, well, then that's exactly what they're going to do. And that's exactly what they want to do so that they can increase, of course, corporate profits executive uh, compensation and all that stuff. Uh, So there's that. But going back to the pandemic, we're we're seeing spikes in quite a few areas. And yet, as well as now, over 50,000 cases have been reported in the country in one day. And that when, you know, the day that that news comes out, that we have for the first time, the only country on earth right? That has reported 50,000 coronavirus cases in a single day. Donald Trump comes out and says, it's going to disappear. <sighs> You're kidding me, right? It's unbelievable. It's, what an incredibly reckless and dangerous statement from somebody who's supposed to be leading the country. He's supposed to be leaning on this issue, but of course he's not. He doesn't want to do anything when it comes to the pandemic. What he wants to do is basically you know, he'll come out and say whatever he has to say so that he can win re-election. And that's, of course, his number one focus. I realize that all politicians have that same focus, but at least some of them might show a little bit more leadership and actually do something to help the pandemic, which, of course, Donald Trump, he's lazy, doesn't want to do anything to help the pandemic. Uh, And look, coronavirus isn't over. Okay, despite what this idiot's saying, no, it's just it's just beginning with us. It's barely even started. Look, California, Texas, Arizona, North Carolina, and Georgia have all just broke their previous single day records for new cases for coronavirus on Wednesday. That, uh, of course, as a result, California and Texas have begun to stall their reopenings 
in order to manage these new outbreaks in Michigan, uh, where I live, Governor Whitmer, who actually has been doing a pretty competent job uh, about this, uh, she has ordered the closure of bars, again, in lower Michigan and some of the hot spots because there have been people that are being irresponsible, not masking up to go to the bar uh, and go to restaurants and, and not doing uh, you know the social distancing when you're inside. And so that has caused coronavirus cases to, again, spike in these areas, uh, which is, of course, a disaster. And people are not taking this seriously. Again, not going out with masks, or not, you know, not wearing their masks when they leave the house, when they go to the grocery store, when they go to the restaurant, when they go to the bars, not social distancing. Uh, and, of course, a lot of them are also having to return to work. And so, look, you can't just tell people to go to work, right? Uh, it, or, you know, uh, you can't tell people to go to work and not, you know, protect them for one, uh, which, again, we're not doing here in America. Uh, we're, you know, a lot of these workplaces, I mean, look, at least in the restaurants that I've seen uh, and, you know, the takeouts that I've seen, they have been wearing masks and they have been uh, wearing gloves and doing all that. That's good. But that's not a guarantee for every workplace. Again, meatpacking plants are uh, probably one of the best example of an employer not giving a shit about their employees and letting them work without the proper protective equipment, right? And so, yeah, you can't order people back to work and not protect them, but you also can't keep people in and not take care of their financial needs as a result of this pandemic, you know? Uh, you can't just send people a one-time you know, time $1,200 check and some extra unemployment benefits and expect everybody to be able to make it out just fine. That's a significant cut in a lot of people's income. And that's just for people who, you know, were lucky enough to be able to qualify for those one-time $1,200 payments. A lot of people did not qualify and are suffering right now. Uh, and so the choice is quickly becoming either return back to a possibly unsafe workplace or get kicked out in the street. And so there are some serious issues. In fact, look, we're possibly looking at a massive housing crisis now coming as well, because again, people can't afford rents. They didn't, uh, the government did not freeze rents or mortgages or provide a UBI. Uh, and of course, what we're getting, look, there's still millions of people who haven't even received any of the unemployment benefits. Uh, and so they're not going to have a place to stay very, very soon. There's going to be a lot of people out on the street and in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, it's bad anytime, but in the middle of a pandemic, it's actually even worse. That's not good. That's not good. That's going to cause a lot more problems. And look, going back to people not taking it seriously right now, that's because we have a president who also doesn't take it seriously, who, you know, doesn't wear a mask in public. Now he says, oh, I'm fine with the mask. The mask, you're fine. They make me look like the Lone Ranger. Look, I don't care what you look like. Okay, you look like the Lone Ranger. Now wear the damn thing and then tell your followers to wear the damn thing. That's all I care about is if you're actually setting a good example. And so, I'll, you know what? You don't deserve credit. But if that's what you're looking for to do the right thing, then I'll give you credit. That's it. I mean, again, we're dealing with a baby. All right. Anyway, so now back to the seriousness of this, right? And I said that we're not done with this. And that's backed up by experts. Uh, just recently, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci uh, had uh, testified before the Senate Help Committee. Uh, this was on Tuesday. And he said that we would not be surprised if we were to go up to 1,000, I'm sorry, 100,000 new coronavirus cases a day if this does not turn around. We're halfway there. We're almost there. I mean, is it, you know, out, is it inconceivable? No, not at all. I think, I think we could be there. We could easily get there. Uh, and most of us look at that and say, well, that's not good. We should do something to fix that. And yet there are people out there that are like, oh, no, no, let's, let's hold my beer. Literally, as I go to the bar, not wearing a mask. There are people throwing coronavirus parties still in places like Alabama, young people even 
And now most of the new cases that we're seeing are young people who could go back to their families and spread the virus to them as well. I mean, it's ridiculous. And so Fauci said this, we're going to continue to be in a lot of trouble and there's going to be a lot of hurt if that does not stop. I am not satisfied with what's going on because we are going in the wrong direction if you look at the curves of the new cases. So we've really got to do something about that and we need to do it quickly. Clearly, we are not in control right now. He's right. We're we're not in control. I mean, and that's not going to change, you know, when you have nearly a third of the country that doesn't seem to be interested in the reality of the facts where they think that, oh, no, no, the real oppression is someone telling me to wear a mask when I go to the grocery store. They're coming up. I mean, they're putting all of their energy and coming up with, you know, ways to try to get around these mask requirements because it thinks, oh, no, they think. It stomps on my freedom. It stomps on my freedom. Well, you know what? Uh, giving people a virus might also infringe on their freedom. I'm just saying. Uh, so maybe you should think about other people before you go out to the store and not wear a mask. Or before, you know, you like some people caught on camera, cough in other people's faces. Real classy. Real classy. And look. Those are the same people, by the way, that are uh, that have turned wearing a mask into a political issue, into a stupid political debate when it shouldn't be. It's, it's, it's just like climate change. And I'm kind of tired of it. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of people listening to bad faith actors when you have the vast majority, 99.9 percent of all scientists and experts advising you to, hey, look, you should probably wear a mask when you're outside and socially distance because guess what? Virus, uh, you know, uh, uh, water droplets and particles that, you, you know, you admit when you speak, that spreads the virus around. And so maybe you should uh, wear something to protect yourself and not just yourself, but everyone else. Uh, and they say no. They say no, and I'm tired of it. Uh, and I'm also tired of having an incredibly weak, pathetic so-called leader that constantly lies uh, and cares about nothing other than himself. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.